Me personally, I would much rather prefer to pick the Citroen C3. Oh my God, that was a big splash of water. We asked you on Instagram what you would like us to do with the Citroen Basalt, and here are some of the replies that we got. So I know you guys wanted a highway stability test, but honestly, we did do this particular setup on the highway, and not a single drop of water fell out. That's how stable the Citroen is there on the highway. But to show you the true magic of Citroen suspension, we've come over here to an extremely bad road, which is honestly not that difficult to find in Pune. We're gonna brim this glass uh, back up to the top, and uh, we're gonna mark how much we filled. Then we're gonna see how much spills out, and just for comparison, we're gonna do it with the Kushak as well. So let's see how it turns out. So all the stuff is ready and now we're going to hit this extremely rough road and Citroen is okay so water has already started to spill out a little bit. To be fair it has been completely brimmed to the top but no worries I mean Citroen suspension is something that is very impressive and I'm sure it's going to be better than the Skoda's one because Skoda's suspension is known to be stiff because they prioritize handling more whereas Citroen prioritizes comfort. If you know anything about Citroen, Citroen has always been the go-to for comfortable affordable cars and their suspension technology has been revolutionary. To make this test as fair as possible, I am going to try and not go above 15 kmph because if you go faster of course it's gonna create more vibrations and jerks and everything so yeah let's see okay this is a pretty bad road and honestly speaking yeah I mean a little bit of water has fallen out but now it's stabilized like it's not really falling out and honestly the suspension is fantastic if you're looking for a daily and you have some really bad roads, the Basalt seems to be an amazing option. Okay, I just went 16 kmph, but I think so that is possible. It's definitely much more comfortable than my Kushak for sure. Okay, now more water is falling out and people are just looking at us as if we're doing something, as if we're doing rocket science in the middle of the road. And almost at the end of the road and once we hop out we'll check how much water has spilled out and we'll mark that and then we'll get the Skoda and see how it fares and that's the end of the road let's stop to the side and as you can see honestly not a lot of water has spilled and we're just gonna mark this So yeah, that was pretty impressive. This is one heck of a comfortable car. Now let's turn around and we'll get the Kushak. Now we've taken out the Kushak and now before somebody slanders us in the comments, in no way, shape or form is a Kushak a direct competitor to the Basalt. This is just for reference and like a benchmark kind of thing. So let's fill up the glass now. Uh, as you can see, we've marked how much the Basalt spilled. So we filled it up till here and the Basalt had water till here by the end of the test. So now let's fill it up all the way back to the first marker and let's see how the Kushak performs. The cup is now filled up to the brim and we're heading on to the absolutely terrible road near our office. First, first bump and we've already spilled some water and that is okay. That is a lot of water out of the cup. So let's see how much of a difference does a Kushak make compared to what is probably the best riding car in I think so under 20 lakh rupees which is any Citroen honestly. This is my dad's car and my dad dailies it and to be fair 
it's done 28000 kilometers and we've not changed the suspension i don't think we need to change the suspension but still just for your information the suspension has been thoroughly used much more than the citroens vag cars are known for their amazing handling uh, they're much more stiff than the competition and yeah you can definitely feel that in the kushak for sure the kushak shares its chassis with the vertus slavia and all of that so you need to keep in mind that technically this is a sedan chassis as well so they have to think about it in that perspective i can already see that it has spilled more water than the basalt already and i have not go gone above 10 kilometers per hour whereas in the basalt if you remember i did 16 kmph which is yeah pretty pretty fast for this road <laughs> This thing handles pretty well but for Indian conditions especially a road like this you can see that yeah this is not a very compliant ride as compared to the basalt we're just heading to the end of this route and we'll stop and check oh my god we'll stop and check how much water the kushak has spilled and you can definitely feel that the kushak just does not have that suspension travel that the basalt has the basalt is just so soft and wallowy and everything and i mean of course there are downsides to it compared in the handling department the basalt has tons of body roll whereas the kushak feels pretty pretty stable and oh my god that was a big splash of water out and we've reached the end of the route let's check out the results so as you can see the kushak definitely spilled more water which means the basalt wins this test and it definitely goes to show the uh, suspension expertise that citroen has this is a fantastic riding car i'm not going to lie it's decently comfortable and yeah i mean i don't have any problems myself with it but if you want the best of the best in terms of ride quality citroen is what you should buy and the basalt is a very good example of that on to the next one Yup, a pretty surprising result for us as well. The Basalt really did outshine the 1 liter TSI on this occasion. That too with one extra passenger. Now yes, slope and what not is something that we do need to take into account, but for some reason draggy software is just not showing us the slope of the Basalt run. But I got to say, the Citroen's PureTech engine packs quite the punch. This basalt that we've gotten for the test is powered by a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine compared to the 1 liter TSI it has 200 cc more displacement and it's a pretty peppy engine i mean i was not expecting this sort of performance from this engine usually anything apart from the vag group i'm not too intrigued to drive uh, especially when it comes to a turbocharged three cylinder but surprisingly this citroen's 1.2 liter turbo 3 is pretty raspy and it's pretty powerful for what it is i have not faced any sort of situation where the engine has a dead spot or you know it's not able to overtake something it's a pretty pretty nice torque curve that it has and the mid range is very very healthy i mean you can just surf on a surge of torque throughout the rev range and that is very very nice once you put your foot down yeah it's pretty pretty rapid for a 1.2 liter 3 cylinder it makes 109 horsepower and 205 newton meters of torque which is pretty decent it's pretty much on par with a 1 liter tsi the only little shortcoming that it might have is the gearbox this too just like my kushak 1 liter gets a 6 speed automatic torque converter gearbox This is also a 6 speed torque converter. This just doesn't feel as quick to respond or as quick to shift as the one found in the Skoda Kushak. 
मोर ओवर आई थिंक सो देर इज अ बिग डिफरेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ द रिफाइनमेंट दैट बोथ ऑफ दीज कार्स हैव द वन लीटर टी एस एट डज फील अ लिटिल बिट मोर रिफाइंड एस्पेशली वेन यूर ड्राइविंग इट बिकॉज यू कैन फील द एंजन एंड एवरी थिंग थ्रू द पेडल्स एंड द स्टियरिंग एंड दैट सेंसेशन इज मच मोर इन द सिट्रोन बट आई एम जस्ट निट पिकिंग एट दिस पॉइंट दिस इज अ वेरी गुड engine and a pretty decent gearbox and if you're going to use it for day to day use i don't think it's going to create any sort of problems some things that i don't like about the citroen's driving experience and this is all citroen's in general that i've driven i've driven the c3 and the c3 aircross the steering feel is a little bit weird it's a little bit jagged and jerky sometimes especially uh, when you're going through a rough patch so yeah the feel and feedback is not my favorite suspension as you just saw it's fantastic and another thing that's pretty annoying is the armrest i mean you can't adjust the height of the armrest so it's just forward and backwards and yeah i mean i just can't seem to find a good spot to rest my arm with the armrest so that also is a little bit of a uh, let down but uh, like i said again this car is perfectly fine if you're going to use it as a daily pretty decently powerful engine pretty decent gearbox overall a pretty good driving package somebody just commented vada pav so i'm just going to eat a vada pav and talk about the interior so talking about the interior if you've ever been in a Citroen C3 or a Citroen C3 Aircross this whole setup is going to be very familiar Honestly there's not much difference I think so just the center console is a little bit different especially the AC controls they're very easy to use and I love the fact that Citroen hasn't shied away from using buttons for basic things like climate control one thing that I don't really like is the gear shifter this design over here is just so early 2000s I think just the normal you know shift knob would have been much much better Of course you get a flat bottom steering wheel just like almost all other Citroens if I'm not wrong. You get a decent instrument cluster in front of you. The graphics are little blurry but I mean hey it's totally acceptable. The screen also is pretty simple to use. You have big widgets so it's easy to you know find out where you're going inside the menus and everything. And of course it has wireless uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You also get a cool little charging pad over there. Storage is pretty abundant. The seat design is a little bit different. You get leatherette on the bottom half and cloth on the top half. And uh, you go to the rear seats and I think so that's a little bit disappointing because the headroom has of course reduced and the seating angle is also a little bit different. So not the most comfortable seating position but if you're going to use it as a urban car I'm pretty sure it's going to be just fine. Speaker system is decent and overall interior is very functional very minimalistic nothing much to complain about no it can't do it Now since the Citroen Basalt is not very good at drifting let me tell you what Citroen thinks it's very good at the way it looks now personally speaking i'm not a big fan of how coupe suvs look like even if you bring a x6m in front of me i am not going to be impressed by the way it looks and i think so it's no different for the basalt now i have to say looks are subjective and the basalt in my opinion it looks a little weird from some angles from some angles it looks pretty all right and especially if you look at the car in isolation especially if you look at the front half in isolation it looks good and if you look at the rear half in isolation it looks good but i think so combined i don't really think it works there are some angles where it looks good from especially the rear three quarters i think so that gives it kind of like an aggressive look and i wish the wheels were a little bit bigger but hey looks are completely subjective and if you like the way it looks i mean go for it me personally i would much rather prefer to pick the citroen c3 or if i want something a little bit more practical the c3 aircross because yeah i like the way those cars look but i mean the basalt i mean it's 
all right i mean i wouldn't mind it but i wouldn't buy it it's like that i would much rather have the normal crossover rather than the coupe crossover now of course with the coupe suv design you get the sloping rear end and you have this very sedan or coupe like drop at the end now of course because the rear end has completely changed the tail lights the bumper uh, the boot of the car is completely different let's head over to the back and talk more about it i've always liked the way citroens have looked i love the funky design language that they have and you really do have a very distinct way that a citroen goes down the road i think you can spot a citroen from a mile away because of some of the really signature design elements that they have now this particular car has even more stylistic elements because it has to be the more styly more fashionable and you know gen z kind of looking car so over here on the roof you have these two little humps which don't really do anything but gives it i guess more style and of course this is a coupe suv so the rear end kind of drops down and it looks like i guess a coupe from the back but the best part about the basalt is because it's bigger and longer than the normal c3 and it does not have to accommodate for another row of seats like the air cross you get the biggest boot out of the three 470 liters compared to the c3's 315 and the air crosses 444 liters so that's a pretty big plus point and over here on the side you get some more design elements and you get these different looking tail lamps as well compared to the air cross and the normal c3 overall i mean yeah i mean i don't mind it but i would much rather prefer the c3 comment your thoughts down below So that was our time with the Citroen Basalt. Now honestly speaking, the design and the looks I can take it or leave it. I personally like a normal looking crossover or SUV. But if you like coupe SUVs then I think so the Basalt is great. I mean, suspension is awesome, the engine is pretty powerful, the interior is functional, pretty well built and it has all the features that you need. Overall, it's a big thumbs up for the Basalt. Looks wise well, I'm on I'm on the edge. I don't really have any opinion on it i'm pretty neutral but comment your thoughts down below on the basalt i think so it's a very good car and i think so citroen as a brand is very underrated in india especially so if you're looking for your next compact crossover suv definitely check out your local citroen showroom because i think so you will be very impressed thank you so much for watching this video subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us on instagram big thank you to everyone who follows us on instagram for 50000 followers and comment your thoughts of the basalt down below and i'll catch you in the next one